Inventiveness has always been a huge asset to mankind. Through inventiveness, we eventually develop the infrastructures for agriculture and the craftworks that shape our world today. As we created new inventions, the need to also protect them from copiers and infringement became increasingly important. Let's take a look at how patent law developed from the late 15th century into the system we have today. Patent law developed over several centuries and is generally considered to have its roots in the Venetian patent statute. In the late 15th century, Venetian glassmakers developed new techniques for coloring glass. To protect their crafts and to stimulate local development, the Senate issued the Venetian Patent Statute in 1474. This statute required detailed disclosure of the invention and in exchange offered the inventor protection from infringement for a period of 10 years. Throughout the rest of Europe, patent law had not really developed yet. English and French monarchs could grant royal monopolies that gave exclusive rights to make or sell a product. Several monopolies were granted in that time for salt, soap, starch, iron and paper. During the early 1600s, these monopolies were heavily criticized for merely enriching the monopolists and for not stimulating technological advancements. Therefore, in 1624, the Statute of Monopolies was introduced in England that restricted patent protection to new inventions only. In the second half of the 18th century, the United States became independent from Great Britain, and this allowed the Founding Fathers to design their own patent laws. While the patent law system in European countries was complicated, expensive, and only within reach of the elite, the US patent law was simple and affordable. In this way, creativity and inventiveness of the common man was stimulated and contributed to the strong economic development of the USA. During the Industrial Revolution, the economic landscape in Europe changed and several leading economies arose. European countries further developed their patent systems independently. New regulations were set in place, for example, the requirement to include a full description of the invention and the introduction of thorough examination procedures. However, around 1850, a counter-movement advocating free trade arose. In European countries such as the Netherlands and Switzerland, a free trade movement was active that allowed free use of foreign protected inventions. Needless to say that these countries greatly benefited from this patent-free period to develop their industries. However, they were regarded as pirate states. A first major step towards harmonization and international protection of industrial property was the Paris Convention, which also included the former pirate states. This international agreement of 1883 helped creators to ensure that their intellectual works, including patents, were also protected in other countries. What about patenting in the pharmaceutical industry? Early drug development mainly consisted of extracting active compounds from plants. A few examples were quinine, digitalis, and alkaloids. By the end of the 19th century, chemists had learned how to synthesize drugs and to create chemically improved versions. The synthesis of a well-known pain reliever, acetyl salicylic acid, or aspirin, was successfully patented in the USA by the German company Bayer in 1900. Interestingly, the various patent laws in European countries at that time would allow patents for chemical and pharmaceutical processes while the synthesis products were explicitly excluded. This exclusion lasted in several European countries until the mid-20th century. Following the Paris Convention and subsequent initiatives, the World Intellectual Property Organization was set up in 1967 to regulate and further harmonize national patent laws towards a global patent system. The Patent Cooperation Treaty was instigated by the WIPO in 1970 which nowadays enables the filing of an application in more than 150 states simultaneously. However, a patent grant is still given at a national or regional level. Since the 1990s, WIPO is thus working on a global patent harmonization treaty, which may ultimately lead to one global patent law. On a European scale, Obtaining a European patent via a single procedure is possible via the European Patent Office under the European Patent Convention. An EPC patent grant, however, is effectively a group of national patents that are valid in each of the designated states. To further simplify procedures, the EU is working on a single unitary patent 
that will be valid in all EU member states. Nowadays, inventors around the world file over 3 million patent applications each year. Recently, the number of patents filed by Asia has grown, indicating an increased importance of patent protection worldwide. Now you have a global overview of the history of the patent system. In the rest of this course, we'll further explore the details of patent law.